What's up, America? Neil here with Jungle Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to answer one of the most commonly asked questions, which is, what do you shoot? And then the question that's always following up is, why do you shoot that? So we're going to get into why I choose the Springfield brand, and I'm going to compare it to Brand X. So let's get started. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk through, specifically, component by component, feature by feature, why I choose the XDM, this is the 3.8 Compact, and why in general I pick the Springfield brand over any other brand. I'm going to show you this side by side to Brand X, which is by far the most popular pistol on the planet, without question. And we're going to take them both apart, and I'm going to show you side by side each exact gun and each feature on why I picked this one. So again, XDM 3.8 Compact versus Brand X. So, Brand X, uh, very common configuration, virtually identical in size as far as the barrel length is concerned. Uh, you will notice here, and I'll put it this way, that the grip length is the width of my finger, so we'll call that probably a half an inch. However, I can switch that out with the carry, the compact version, and now we're, I'll just call that even. I'm not even going to get in capacity or caliber or any of that because that's personal choice. I'm just talking about the specific brand and the features. Now, first and foremost, this particular pistol, the Springfield XDM, comes standard. It's the way it comes with steel sights that have a fiber optic front insert. This one is the green one, which I switched out for the red. Uh, again, that is the standard feature. If we look at Brand X, the person who owns this gun has already modified it, and they should have, which is good, and they changed their sights out. But normally, Brand X comes with plastic sights. And I don't care who you are, plastic sights are garbage. So, uh, first and foremost, for the price point, by the way, we can argue that later, they're roughly the same. This one you can usually find a little cheaper than this one, but we'll just call it even. I don't even care about that. Let's call it even. So the sights are made of plastic versus metal, and I get a fiber optic. Okay? So, number one, sights, that's why I picked that one. Number two, we have magazines, right? Obviously, I already told you that it comes with two magazines standard. We're going to just say they both do. We'll even give this one a third magazine. That's fine. But they are made of steel, metal magazines versus plastic magazines. Okay. Brand X uses plastic. Springfield, whichever magazine we're talking about, uses metal. I prefer the metal durability and quality over this one. That's why I picked that one. Okay, so disassembly, another feature that I prefer is that I lock the slide to the rear and I move a big lever up. Super easy. This particular mod doesn't require a trigger pull. I could care less. Either way, you should be smart enough to know whether there's a, to check it to make sure there's a round in there. But this one doesn't require a trigger pull. Fine, whatever. Some of Springfields do. That's not the big point. The big point here is the big lever. If my hands are cold or wet, it's easy to get to. If I have Brand X here, I've got to do this goofy tension. I got to squeeze it, pull these two tabs down, which are not very big, let them go forward, then release them, press the trigger, and slide it off. To me, it just seems like extra steps. Again, not a big deal. It's just little features that add up to, a, to a, my de main decision. So now that we have them apart, let's take a look at them. All right, so when I look at a polymer gun, meaning that the frame is polymer, not any type of, of metal, uh, and a steel slide, I look at where the metal-on-metal -metal contacts are. So if we look here, these little tabs, these two up front, and these little tabs in the back, are where your metal-on-metal -metal contact come into play, okay? which adds in accuracy as the gun stays together, it creates a, a stronger platform. So let's look at that compared to the Springfield, which is my one of my greatest features, in my opinion, of the Springfield, is that if we compare these side by side, instead of these two little tabs up front and two little tabs in the back, I've got this entire steel block up front and this entire steel block in the rear. So if we compare the metal surfaces where the actual frame, metal on metal, is going to contact with the slide, that is a significant difference. That is unarguable. That is significantly larger than that little tab. And that, for me, is a main selling point. All right, the next thing is these uh, recoil springs. So this is uh, a no-brainer as well. In Brand X here, this is a later model. It doesn't make any difference. Even in the newer models, they have this aluminum outer coating. But the guide rod inside there is still plastic. Okay, fine. The guide rods have always been metal. Always, from day one with Springfield. And I like that. That is a significantly stronger, more durable construction, having a steel guide rod 
versus plastic, okay? And so that's another selling feature that I like. Now we look at the barrels. And the other point that is very important to me is the reliability of the gun on various types of ammo. So if we look here, you can tell that this is a very polished, shiny feed ramp. Well, that is standard in all Springfields. They come with a polished feed ramp, unlike Brand X that is a coated feed ramp. You will also notice that the width of the opening, the mouth of that particular feed ramp, is much wider than Brand X. Again, that's going to give you a wider, broader range of ammo and bullet heads that are going to fit there more reliably. You can also see that in the chamber walls itself that the Springfield is thicker than Brand X. So overall, I have a major advantage here with the Springfield. Let's focus again back to the frame. First and foremost, every Springfield has an ambidextrous magazine release. I can't tell you how many times in the field it's been uh, a real advantage having the ability to press that uh, because of certain situations. On Brand X, of course, I have a switchable magazine release. And yes, in the latest, greatest version, it's bigger. It's still only on one side. So I like the advantage of having an ambidextrous magazine release. It's always on both sides of the gun. Continuing on the frame here, this is a cut and dry. This is obvious. You can see the thickness and the fact that the magwell is actually beveled. Again, this is standard on all Springfields. It's extremely thick and heavy. I can squeeze the heck out of that and barely moves at all. If we look at brand X, you can see how thin that plastic is. And you probably see it on camera as I flex the plastic frame in there. Okay. So just from a rigidity standpoint and ruggedness and the fact that that's beveled, that really helps to feed magazines in very smoothly. And I think that's a major event. And now we have this uh, grip safety, which is controversial. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I don't really see what the difference is. It doesn't make any difference to me whatsoever whether the Springfield has it or not. I do know that for new shooters and just for peace of mind, uh, for people who are carrying for the first time, the fact that they have this gives them a little extra peace of mind, which means that if this trigger is depressed somehow while you're holstering, as long as you don't press that grip safety, uh, the gun won't go off. And obviously if I have any type of proper hold, even all the way down here, the gun will still fire. I could take it or leave it, I really don't care, but I do think it is a nice safety feature. Uh, that covers a, a broader range of customers. With uh, also the customization of the grip, the newest, latest, greatest version of Brand X does have uh, additional uh, back straps that you can sub add to. Um, same thing with the Springfield. I like these a little bit more solid. You drive this pin out and then you can put that in there and it is like fused in there. Once that pin is there, that is super tight. Again, either one doesn't really make any difference, but this does have a small, medium, and large where you can only add to the new frame of brand X. In both cases, they have these stupid little safety trigger things. I think they're totally nonsense. It's like putting a, a safety on a gas pedal. If you press the, press the trigger, it goes off. So I, I don't really get it, but nonetheless, they both have that, so we'll just call that a draw. Not that I really give it much weight, but when we're talking about features of a product, uh, there is a loaded chamber indicator. If I press down on here, you can see that kind of sticking up. What I like about that and the advantage of other loaded chamber indicators is that it sticks up. So at night, I can actually feel it. Uh, other brands, there's a little window in there. And there's a little side one on the new, uh, new uh, latest grace of this one. But this one just seems to be much more obvious and tactile without being bright or red or any crazy color. Lastly, we have the... Uh, the striker position indicator in the back here, again for me, take it or leave it, I could care less, but it's still, yes again, another feature that's on the gun, so if that's something that you like, it tells you that the, the striker is in the cock position. So again, last rundown, we'll just call the price as even, although you can usually find this one a bit cheaper. Again, steel sights versus plastic, steel magazine versus plastic, steel guide rod versus plastic, better sights right out of the box, fiber optic standard, polished feed ramp, non-polished feed ramp, significantly more rail, to frame um, surface area versus the tabs that are available on Brand X. I'm just gonna say that. I mean, there's not much, those are the things that I look for in a gun for durability, quality, and reliability. To sum that all up, I don't even care if one gun was a couple hundred dollars, even $200 more or less than the other, but at the end of the day, when you add in the fact that you're gonna have to replace the sights on Brand X, uh, it's significantly more. But price shouldn't be your main, buy, main factor there reliability of the gun. With all those things said, I'm only telling you why I choose Springfield over everybody else. And that's every other brand, not just Brand X, which I'm sure you all know what Brand X is. In addition to all those things, I have a proven track record with Springfield. I have excellent reliability with them. I personally shoot them well. They match up with my natural point of aim. 
and so they perform very well for me. Brand X, by the way, is Bet Your Life Reliable, along with any of the major top three or four brands that you're gonna find out there. I'd simply choose Springfield for the reasons that I gave you. I think that you should shoot whatever you're comfortable with and whatever works for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that I should just call this video Unleash the Troll Hordes because everyone's going to come out there just flaming mad because they're all emotionally attached to their guns. My point is not to knock another brand. I'm simply telling you the advantages of why I picked Springfield. So I hope you liked it. I hope you have an open mind and you learned something. If you didn't, give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. Go ahead and subscribe. You'll be notified every time a new video comes out. You know by now you can find us on Facebook and we love Facebook likes. Until next time, remember, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.